if a picture of this mouse is tweeted out to Instabook Face or Tiki Talk, we will be ruined. No, sir, that's not gonna happen. That rodent is toast. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 upcoming movies that might suck in 2021. You want me to be a baby again? I can appreciate your concern. We had a good run. For this list, we'll be looking at movies scheduled for release in 2021, which for a variety of reasons have us worried. Please note that release dates are subject to change. What film do you think will be the biggest flop of 2021? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, The Last Duel. It's called The Last Duel. Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Adam Driver. We're beginning our list with a real coin toss. The Last Duel is a historical drama thriller based on a book by Eric Yeager. Inspired by a true story, it centers on Jean de Carouge and Jacques Le Gris, two 14th century Frenchmen ordered to duel to the death. When you hear the words written by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, your mind instantly goes to goodwill hunting. Look. You got something none of us have. Oh, come on. And that's a great movie. The Last Duel also benefits from having the legendary Ridley Scott in the director's chair. Although those three household names have made substantial contributions to popular film, their efforts have been very inconsistent over the last few years. We could get another Live by Night, Robin Hood, or The Great Wall. How can we be sure? Why not try it? Number nine. The Boss Baby, Family Business. You want me to be a baby again? With 3D animated films becoming increasingly inexpensive to make, those intended for theatrical release now need to work extra hard to make an impression. And if we're being honest, 2017's The Boss Baby was pretty forgettable. Sure, it made over a half a billion dollars at the box office, but critics were not impressed. Do the math, kid. There's only so much love to go around. Alec Baldwin as an intelligent infant secret agent is a fun gag, but we're not sure it warrants a feature film, let alone a franchise. But that's what we've gotten. There's already a Boss Baby Netflix series, and now Family Business will jump forward into the future to when Baldwin's Boss Baby is all grown up. It's an interesting move, but we're not convinced the sequel will find its footing. I'm sure this isn't something money can't solve. What the fudge? <laughs> Number eight. Tom and Jerry. We have a mouse problem. With the what now? Can't a classic animated property be left alone as just that? A classic? Apparently not. In 2021, this iconic cat and mouse pair will be making the jump to the big screen in a live action CGI hybrid like many of their contemporaries before them. Now, don't get us wrong, we love Tom and Jerry, but their dynamic is supposed to be a simple one fit for short films, not an existential crisis and a feature length narrative. For picture of this mouse is tweeted out to Instabook Face or Tiki Talk, we will be ruined. No, sir, that's not gonna happen. That rodent is toast. Furthermore, it really doesn't inspire confidence that this project has been languishing in development hell since 2009. Good things take time, but in the movie industry, anything that spent that long in the oven was likely tweaked by way too many chefs over the years. I will not let this hotel be ruined by a cat and a mouse. Number seven, Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway. I didn't realize I was with a bunch of sophisticates. While 2018's Peter Rabbit got average reviews and took in a decent box office haul, critics complained that the titular rabbit was a bit mean-spirited. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the creative team took that feedback to heart for the sequel. Trailers for Peter Rabbit 2 The Runaway show that the titular bunny gets all his friends kidnapped after encouraging them to rob a farmer's market. My family's in trouble. And I'm gonna get them back. His human friends are left to bail him out of the mess that he caused. The rabbit's bad decision making is coupled with a trailer full of tame jokes and cheap slapstick. We don't have much confidence that this sequel will be a hopping success. We had a good run. I'm gonna live forever! Number six, Cruella. You're not just an actress. What do you mean just an actress? You said it yourself. With only a few exceptions on her resume, Emma Stone is as close to a sure thing as you can get in Hollywood. If there's one actor who can make us like the 101 Dalmatians villain, Cruella DeVille, it's her. But of all the classic characters to come out of the House of Mouse, is she really the one we want to humanize? I'm through with all of you! I'll just even! Yes, she's got a wicked sense of fashion, but her record on animal rights is just about as bad as it gets. And the premise isn't trying to rewrite history. The film will follow a young Cruella as she becomes a monster driven by her fixation with dog skin. We're just really not sure how this can possibly work. I'm reduced to tramping through sewage. 
Number five, the hitman's wife's bodyguard. I can appreciate your concern, but I assure you, you are perfectly safe. Our next film falls into the category of who asked for this. Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson have both delivered plenty of memorable performances in recent years, but as pleasant as it is to see these two on screen together, this collaboration deserves a better property. Thank God you're here. Don't know what I would have done without you. All the star power and comedic chemistry simply wasn't enough to hold audience interest in this otherwise uninspired film. But it would seem that the dollars make sense, so we're getting one anyways in 2021. When Selma Hayek's Sonia Kincaid comes under threat, the unlikely pair of Michael Bryce and Darius Kincaid are pulled into another action-packed adventure. Here's hoping that the filmmakers will learn from the shortcomings of the first movie. Do you have any idea how stupid you sound? Number four, The Tomorrow War. Hey, that's good. That is damn good. The Tomorrow War centers on soldiers from the past who are drafted to save humanity from alien invaders. Sounds like fun, right? And with Chris Pratt at the head of the large ensemble cast, it's certainly got the right leading man. But something about this movie feels off. Probably not a good idea. Apart from Pratt and J.K. Simmons, the sizable cast is otherwise made up of actors best known from television or minor film roles. This is also director Chris McKay's first foray into live action. Hollywood seems really hesitant to take risks on new properties. The best case scenario is that this does well and becomes the next Edge of Tomorrow. Just don't hold your breath. I've tried everything, it doesn't work. Number three, The Forever Purge. Okay kids, now I know bad things do happen tonight, but we can afford protection. So we'll be fine just like always, no worries. In this dystopian alternate version of the United States, there's an annual event during which all crime is legal, and that includes murder. There's no denying that this is a compelling concept for a horror franchise. The premise opens up a lot of opportunities for social commentary about a wide range of subjects, including human nature, race, class, and violence in the media. They're keeping the population down by getting rid of people like us to save money. But after four movies and a TV series, The Purge feels like it's running out of steam and interesting things to say. Plus, there's rarely been a fifth installment in any horror franchise that brought anything new and exciting to the table. This is being billed as the final installment in the series, but really, how many horror series have honored their word? It's almost over. Don't, please. Number two, old. He will speak of you and your words. Your book will be the seeds of many of his great thoughts. The only thing we've heard about the plot of M. Night Shyamalan's next film, Old, is that it'll be based on the story told in the graphic novel Sandcastle. But that's more than enough to get us worried. The last time Shyamalan adapted a major property into a feature film, we got 2010's The Last Airbender. It wasn't very smart. I was just upset. This film horrified fans of the original cartoon and scored an abysmal 5% on Rotten Tomatoes. And since he's writing, producing, and directing old, he'll have plenty of creative control over the final product. It would honestly be a major twist if this new film turns out to be anywhere near as good as its source material. It's time for you to stop doing this! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Chaos Walking Where are all the women? They're dead. When it was announced that this YA trilogy was being adapted in 2011, fans were ecstatic. If you like sci-fi with heart and a creative approach to storytelling, this Patrick Ness series is a must read. It's so loud here. We call it the noise. The books are set in a strange future where women have disappeared and men hear one another's thoughts. When Todd Hewitt meets a young woman named Viola, he's pulled into a life-changing conflict. If you want to protect the girl, you have to leave now. With Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley playing the lead roles, this film seemed like a sure thing, especially with director Doug Lyman at the helm. Unfortunately, the film was described as unreleasable, prompting major reshoots and multiple delays. It's finally set for release, but the short promotion window suggests it's just getting dumped in theaters. I'm sorry. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.